Welcome to my review of the newest product from uh, Kiwi Ears, the Dolce. I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but uh, it's kind of written like that, so should be fine. Kiwi Ears got kind of popular with their Cadenza IEM, which is still in the budget range and got pretty good reviews. So I was really curious how this one sounds because it's even cheaper. It's like, I, I think 25 euro here. So it kind of competes with the Truth Ear Holler, the Tangsu Warner and all these kind of really cheap IEMs. So yeah, I bought one and um, I used it for quite some time. I think I'm ready for this review. So let's just start with build quality. So like most of these kind of budget IEMs, um, it's very lightweight. You have this mad hard plastic backplate here with a see-through shell. All right, let me show this. There. Just like with uh, the Tang Su or the KZPR1 and everything, seems like these see-through shells are in fashion now. <laughs> all in all, with the backplate, it's actually a pretty subtle design with the darker black and blue color here, like nothing too fancy. Just from the build, it kind of reminds me of a higher quality truth ear holler. Like the backplate feels same-ish, but again, higher quality. Just a cooler design here instead of the all around black plastic. So on all, pretty good build, does not feel cheap or anything. The cable is fine. It's not the most flexible, but it also does not tangle up as much either. Just your standard cable here. Most cables in this price range feel pretty similar to me. Just a few of them are really straight up bad. Most are okay, just like this one. These are also pretty comfortable. Again, they are really lightweight and they are rather small, so that way they should fit well with most ears. They do with mine at least. They also do not protrude much out of your ear and the included silicon ear tips are fine. Like they are rather average quality wise but they work well with the ear sound profile. They sit quite firm and uh, they do not feel loose which I really like. The ear hooks do their job well. And they do not push the IM out of your ears like some do when they are bent in the wrong way or something. I have this issue sometimes with like a few ear hooks. Maybe I, my, my ears do have kind of a weird shape there, but with this one, it's perfectly fine. So all in all, comfort is really good here. So seeing all the recent IM releases, many manufacturers seem to try to release more IEMs that have a more V-shaped sound signature and try to get away from the, let's say, overly balanced IEMs that were kind of famous when this chi-fi thing started with, uh, for example, the 7 Hz Zero afterwards, then the Tang Su and everything. All of these are different versions of a more neutral sound and recently they have there has been more of a focus on bass and treble and kind of a little, little recessed mid-range at least i've got the feeling that there are more iems that kind of exhibit this kind of sound signature but all of them still have different characteristics just like the dolce here sound wise again it's a slight v-shape maybe even a w because the dolce actually has a few things to its sound that you should consider before buying it. But let's start with the bass response. It is somewhat elevated above neutral, but with more mid than sub bass, but that it does quite well. It me means it has a nice punch to its sound that gives music quite some drive. But if you hear for that clean sub bass response and rumble, the Dolce is not really your IM. The quantity of bass is also not on bass head levels. The upper bass is also a little elevated and together with the rest of the lower bass response makes especially drums and bass guitars sound pretty good and powerful. Going further into the mid range, there's a noticeable dip up to 2000 Hz there, which in contrast to the elevated bass 
makes non-bass instruments more thin sounding and there's just less weight and let's say heft in these instruments like electric guitars, some string instruments for example sound a little less natural. Still there comes a really nice cleanliness of the overall sound with that so this is not a complete downside. Like there is a nice separation between bass and mid-range and stuff does not get uh, muddied together that fast. And especially if you like more V-shaped IEMs, up until this point it is done actually quite well. In contrast to that, the upper midrange is elevated again, so these same instruments can sound thin and harsh at the same time. Though uh, somehow I really like acoustic stuff here, that sounds pretty nice. There still is a nice clarity coming with that elevation in the upper midrange and I could easily live with that if not for the next issue. Because another elevation that is by far the most distracting thing I would say is in the treble region. There's quite a bit of sibilance with male and female voices and piercing cymbal hits which is sad because I do like vocals as a whole on this one. Like they are not overly in the foreground but they are really present and clean at the same time. And in the same way where the deeper drums like the kick drum sounds great, snare hits are sometimes just over the top and start to hurt. And I think especially for the snare hits, the elevation at the 4000 hertz and then again at 8000 combined makes it really unpleasant from time to time. That does not happen on every song or album. Like sometimes it's at the edge of being too much but it is still in that region where it would still sound really energetic and emotional I guess. But still more often than I would like it to it is just wow that is too much. I feel like they aimed at making a really engaging sounding IEM that makes a good contrast to the more relaxing sounding IEMs that we have on the market. But it is just just a little too much overall there in the treble. Talking about the technical side, it's overall pretty good for its price range and the treble boost does help with this sense of space between instruments. Imaging is also above average I would say in this price range and with music you can usually point out the different instruments and their positions but when I used them for gaming they were kind of overwhelmed and the directional audio and the depth was kind of off but this could also just be me being bad at playing first person shooters. I mean we are talking about what like 25 euro here and for that they are completely fine. Like I did in some of my other reviews, I try to make some fitting comparisons at the end of a, a review. I think um, you, just because of the price range, you could compare the Dolce first with the Tang Su Warner, of course. The Warner is way more smoothed out and relaxed. There's more weight in the mid-range, so a lot of instruments are just more in the foreground like uh, guitars, voices, everything sh sounds just more direct but the bass is also noticeably less punchy and there's like overall less quality in the bass region and things can get muddy a bit. Next one, the 7 hertz zero. Again, the zero. The zero has way less bass and is a obviously more neutral IEM, has a more metallic tone to it that also gets harsh but in a different way than the Dolce. Instruments on the Zero are more in the foreground but there's also like a certain glare to them. But the sibilance is worse on the Dolce here. And at last the Truth Ear Holla, also pretty, I don't want to say famous but well known IEM. Because it's so cheap and it's okay. The Holla has a, again a more relaxed sound signature, it has less bass quantity I would say. Instruments are more in the foreground because the, the mid-range is just less recessed as the mid-range on the Kiwi ears here but the Holla has more of a dry sound to it that you really have to like I would say. The recessed and relaxed treble is a big contrast to the Dolce here. So these are all really different sounding IEMs. At the end to compare to 
two more V-shaped IMs, I would say, although these are more expensive. I will still talk about them. Um, at first, the recently released KZPR2, you really hear the difference in quality there. Like with the PR2, you have like better sub bass, you have uh, just a less harsh, but more, let's say, fitting mid range. Like instruments sound clean but smooth at the same time. And yeah, there is this issue with the treble with KZ being shady as always. I found the treble on the Dolce to be more aggressive than on the uh, KZ uh, PR2 on the version 2, which is the. Uh, more treble intense version like there you have a treble boost that is fine to me but uh, i never had this this peak where you really try to oh i don't want to hear these sibilant vocals anymore or i don't want to hear this snare hit anymore because it actually hurts my ear like i didn't i did not have this on the pr2 i would say if uh, you're treble sensitive then you, you should really first try these before buying. And uh, the second one, the uh, Truth Ear Zero, which is also a more V-shaped IEM. And this also just, for sure, you have this harshness in the vocal range in the uh, Truth Ear Zero, but it, it bothers me less than what is being done on the Dolce. With the Truth Ear Zero, you also get like a more cleaner bass response, although they are kind of similar with the uh, more focus on the mid bass and on the punch there. Overall, I really want to like the Dolce, but apparently I'm pretty sensitive to the stronger boost in the treble here. And if you are not, the Dolce is a pretty good example of a V-shaped IEM and an interesting competitor in this price range. Especially if you like the clean vocals that are really amplified by the boost in the upper mid range and just the just a V-shaped sound with a focus on um, let's say bass guitars and mid bass punch and clean electric guitars and clean vocals on the other side that sometimes do not really mix good with each other like again there is some sort of harshness things that sound clean can also sound easily pretty thin on the other side but these are all kind of nitpicky things here like it's an interesting approach and I would like this way more if I wouldn't be so pierced by <laughs> some instruments. But also, I guess, if you already have one of the others that I mentioned, especially in the price range from 50 euro, dollar, whatever, and upwards, I don't think you need this one to start with the IEM world and to or maybe dip your toes in the budget V-shaped world, whatever then try these. These are not too expensive. So that's it with this review. I hope after hearing all of this, you're not more confused than before. And I could give you some information here and help you decide if you want to buy the Dolce. See you next time.